NAT is a very important mechanism. NAT is widely used in various types of networks, especially in enterprise networks. This document aims to help you understand the basic principles of NAT, the NAT types, and the usage scenarios of NAT. Also, this document introduces basic NAT configurations on routers. First of all, let's look at the technical background of NAT. The current networks are mostly IPv4 networks. IPv4 uses 32-bit IP addresses, and the IPv4 address space is generally exhausted. Some IP addresses are used for special purposes. As the public network grows rapidly, various electronic products are now included in networks, including IoT and smart appliance, leading to IPv4 address exhaustion. To address this problem, we've worked in lots of methods, such as address allocation. The most important one is NAT, short for Network Address Translation. In NAT, some IPv4 addresses are used as private IP addresses only in private environments, such as within a company or campus. These private IP addresses cannot access a public network. Anyone who has the ability to construct an IP network can use the private IPv4 address space. That is, the IP addresses starting with 192.168.10.x. On the home network shown in the figure, a router functions as the gateway whose network adapter address is 192.168.1.0/24. This is a private IP address. A private IP address cannot directly access the public network, but we can make a move to allow the private IP address to access the public network. Such a move is NAT. A private network cannot access the public network because it is unrecognizable on the public network and therefore unreachable. The private IP address 192.168.1.0 has been used for multiple internal networks around the globe. By NAT, this private IP address can be converted to a valid public IP address, which can be used in a public network. There is a private IP server on the internal network. A PC on the external network wants to access the server on the internal network, but the PC cannot use the public IP address 202.10.1.23/24 to access the server on the internal network. By NAT, the IP address of the internal network server can be mapped to a public IP address so that PCs on the external network can access the server. In addition, the internal IP address can be hidden to the external. For example, if a camera at the home has a valid public IP address, any nodes on the public network can access their IP address. If a hacker uses the public IP address to control the camera, there will be lost to the user. In response, NAT is introduced. It is a rewriting of the source or destination IP address and IP packets. In each of the Class A, Class B, and Class C IPv4 addresses, a private IP address is used. Specifically, 10.0.0.0/8 is a Class A private IP address. 172.16.0.0/1200 is a Class B private IP address. Send 192.168.0.0/16 is a Classic C private IP address. NAT has its advantages and disadvantages. As for advantages, NAT saves IP address space, resolves IP address overlapping, and improves flexibility and network access to the internet. NAT reduces the difficulty in IP readdressing in case of network changes and can hide the internal IP address to enhance security. As for disadvantages, the fields of each packet need to be rewritten on the NAT device, which consumes CPU resources. The storage of NAT entries consumes the dynamic storage space. The forwarding delay is added, and the E28 navigation capability is lost. Therefore, NAT is seldom used in IPv6. Some applications do not support NAT, such as IPsec VPN. There are four types of NAT. 
The first NAT type is static NAT. For example, an internal network uses the address segment 192.168.1.1. A router functions as the gateway of the PC, and the router is connected to the public network. The IP address 200.1.1.1 is a valid public IP address. Private IP addresses cannot access the public network node 8.8.8.8. To address the problem, deploy static NAT on the router. First of all, apply for a valid public IP address. For example, 200.1.1.100. Then associate the public IP address 200.1.1.100 with the private IP address 192.168.1.1. After the association succeeds, the PC and the private network accesses the external network with the source IP address as 192.168.1.1 and destination IP address as 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. When data packets arrive at the router, the router checks NAT entries. Upon finding that the private IP address 192.168.11 needs to be converted to the public IP address 200.1.1.100, the source IP address in the data packets is changed to 200.1.1.100 before the data packets are forwarded. The data packets are then transmitted over the public network and destined for 8.8.8.8. The packets sent back by 8.8.8.8 includes the destination IP address as 200.1.1.100. The router checks NAT entries of the data packets and finds that the private IP address corresponding to 200.1.1.100 is 192.168.1.1. At this point, the data packet is rewritten, and the destination IP address is changed to 192.168.1.1. The data packets are then sent to the PC with the IP address of 192.168.1.1. Static NAT achieves inner working between the internal and external networks. The thing to be noticed is that the internal network PC can proactively access public network nodes. In this mapping, the IP address 192.168.11 is mapped to the IP address 200.1.1.100. That is, all the ports of the IP address 192.168.1.1 are associated with the IP address 200.1.1.100. This is not secure in some scenarios. For example, if the PC on the internal network is a web server, and we map port 80 of the IP address, 192.168.1.1, to port 80 of the IP address, 200.1.1.100. Therefore, static NAT includes both IP to IP address mapping and IP address and port mapping. Another thing to be noticed is that static NAT cannot ultimately save public IP addresses or relieve IPv4 address exhaustion. A private IP address corresponds to a public IP address. Another disadvantage is that static NAT needs to be manually configured. If there are multiple private IP addresses on the internal network, there will be huge workload. Also, modification is required in case of IP address changes. Address pool-based one-to-one mapping. Notepad indicates that only IP addresses and not ports are converted. This is a dynamic mapping. For example, the IP addresses of a public network range from 200.1.1.100 to 200.1.1.110. A total of 10 IP addresses are grouped as an address pool. When the first private IP address wants to access the public network, an IP address is selected from the address pool and allocated to the user. A dynamic mapping entry is formed. Dynamic entries have TTL. When TTL elapses, the entry is deleted. If the entry is still used, the entry will not be deleted. When another private IP address wants to access the router, another IP address is selected from the address pool and allocated to the user, and another dynamic entry is established. 
When no data is sent to the public network from the 192.168.11 internal network user, the entries established previously will be deleted, and the corresponding public IP address is moved back to the address pool. Because this is one-to-one -one dynamic mapping, the address pool can be used for at most 10 users at a time. Dynamic one-to-one -one mapping is more flexible than static one-to-one -one mapping and has less manual configuration. This mode, however, also does not save IP addresses ultimately. Address pool-based N1 mapping, also called NPAD, that is, both the user IP addresses and ports are converted. This mode can ultimately relieve IPv4 address exhaustion. Simply put, if there are three private IP address 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.2, and 192.168.1.3, and there is only one public IP address 200.1.1.100, we can configure the IP address 200.1.1.100.2003, 200.1.1.100.2004, and 200.1.1.100.2005. Although the same public IP address is used, different port numbers are used to map to private IP addresses. Address pool-based one-to-one mapping works only for network addresses. Address pool-based N1 mapping works for both network addresses and port numbers. The implementation is shown in the figure. The three private IP addresses, 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.2, and 192.168.1.3 are mapped to the public IP address 200.1.1.100 as 200.1.1.100.2003, 200.1.1.100.2004, and 200.1.1.100.2005. NAT Server Mode This mode applies to the scenario where the internal network server wants to provide external network user services. For example, Port 80 of the web server is used to provide services to the external network, but the external network cannot use IP address 192.168.1.1 to access the web server. In this case, use the NAT server made to map the real IP address of the web server to port 80 of the IP address 200.1.1.1 on the external network. If the external network wants to access the web server, a data packet is sent to 200.1.1.100.8080. Upon receiving the data packet, the router converts the destination IP address to 192.168.1.180. In this way, data access succeeds. Now we are going to talk about how to deploy NAT on routers. First up, static NAT. The internal network segment is 192.168.1.0, and the external network segment is 200.1.1.0. On the router, map the IP address 192.168.1 to 200.1.1.100. This public IP address is obtained from the carrier, and this IP address is reachable on the public network. Create the mapping. The key commands are marked red. Run the NAT static global command on the external network interface to map the public and private IP addresses. Then dynamic address pool based. One to one mapping. As an example, the obtained IP address pool includes IP addresses from 200.1.1.100 to 200.1.1.110. First of all, define a NAT address pool and then an ACL to match the users allowed to be implemented with NAT for external network access. Then associate the ACL with the address pool. Configure these commands on the router interface connecting to the external network. Here 2000 indicates the ACL number, address group, indicates the configured address pool and NOPAT indicates one-to-one -one NAT. That is, one private IP address corresponds to a public IP address in the address pool. If the NOPAC command is not entered, 
many to one NAT is used. That is, multiple IP addresses correspond to different port numbers of the same public IP address. In actual network deployment, the NOPAC command is not run. Let's move on to easy IP NAT. Some small and medium-sized enterprises use private IP addresses for the internal network. In case of connection to the external network, the public IP address of the router interface connecting to the external network is used to implement NAT. All the PCs on the internal network use this public IP address to access the external network. In this way, purchasing additional IP addresses from the carrier is not needed. The configuration of Easy IP NAT is similar to that of NAPT. In this configuration, the source IP is the one that matches ACL 2000. While accessing the public network, the source IP address, private IP address, is replaced with the interface IP address, public IP address. This is the type of end to one mapping. The NAT server mode is widely used. For example, an internal network server needs to provide services to the external network, but external network users cannot access the internal network server at the very beginning. To address the problem, deploy the NAT server function on the router to map the private IP address to a public IP address, and map a specific port number of the server to the port number corresponding to the public IP address. This slide shows the commands for NAT server configuration.